Um, we are doing an artist inspiration today, and uh, we are going to take inspiration from the artist Edgar Degas, um, who is uh, was a fresh French impressionist painter. And um, I really love his style. I really love his subject, which is uh, ballerinas. And so what I'm going to do first is tell you a little bit about him. And then we're going to do um, a little uh, exercise where we do some sketching and then we're going to paint. So um, I'm working in my journal today. You can work on a canvas or on a piece of paper or um, whatever you have. And then uh, if you want to grab some papers for some sketches, we are going to do some sketching as well. Um, <clears throat> so today we are learning about uh, Edward Degas and um, he has a wonderful quote that I absolutely love that says, art is not what you see, uh, but what you make others see. And I think that is absolutely beautiful. Um, so when I think of him, I often think of that quote. Um, he was not just a painter, he was a sculptor. Um, about uh, halfway through his life, he started going blind and um, it progressed rather quickly. And so um, in the later stages of his art career, he worked with sculpting because it was easier for him to uh, create uh, not only with his eyesight, but with his um, his hands, with, with something tactile. So he was a painter and a sculptor. Um, his most frequent subjects were ballerinas, but he also did quite a bit uh, just with French life. Um, he loved doing figures. Um, he really focused on unusual postures. And so um, a majority of his pieces, actually, I think almost all of his pieces are um, of people. Um, he has a unique style of using color and light and motion. Um, and you can almost always pick out his work compared to other impressionist painters. Um, so what I am going to encourage you to do, hi Emily, how are you? Um, is either get a piece of paper or if you're working in a journal with me, uh, you can uh, just uh, um, losing my words here. Um, if you're working in a journal with me, you can uh, just use the left side of the journal. Um, but what I'm going to encourage you to do uh, is we are going to look at some of his pieces and we are going to um, sketch and I want you to sketch um, in bo like little boxes. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of divide up my page um, and we're going to look at quite a few different pieces. Um, but I just made eight little boxes here. And um, while you're sketching, what I encourage you to do is be free, be fast. Um, we will spend about 30 minutes per uh, um, image. We're going to look at some of his pieces. And I want you to choose a few that appeal to you. Um, two, six, eight. I think I've got about 20. Um, total. So choose a, a few that appeal to you. And I just want you to quickly in your box, just sketch. Don't erase. This is a sketch, not a final, you know, we're not painting this. We're just using this to kind of um, feel out his uh, style and his postures and take some inspiration from him. So for example, if I'm looking at one of his um, pieces um, of ballerinas, Let's say, um, you know, I'm just going to quickly sketch maybe a leg, maybe the, uh, the ballerina and the general shape. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, proportional. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of taking inspiration from the shapes and the composition. So sketching quick, easy, not realistic doesn't even have to be good um, but we're gonna do that uh, about 30 seconds a piece so I'm gonna put them up on the screen 
and I encourage you just to sketch along with me. Um, if you are not a sketcher and this really stresses you out, I'd like to encourage you to give it a try. Um, but you can also just journal, you can write, um, you can choose words from each piece. So for example, pink, ballerinas, um, strong light, dull colors, I mean, whatever you want to do. Um, but what we want to do for the next several minutes is just take some inspiration. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to put uh, samples of his work up in the corner here to keep on screen. And then uh, let's work about 30 seconds a piece uh, on our sketches. So uh, the first is called Dancer in Pink. Thank you. 
All right. Now, like I said, this was just meant to be a sketch. This is not supposed to be perfect, but what I'm hoping um, is that you, um, number one, as you moved through the process, you started um, understanding the figures just a little bit better. Um, you you looked at them, you looked at the shape and the lines that their body was making. Um, also, the second thing um, I want you to notice is that there was a lot of variety in the positioning of his models. Um, as you can see with mine, they are in fact sketches. These are not perfect. They're not beautiful. I would never you know, really show these to anybody as a completed work of art. Um, but to work with Degas and to work with um, some of his ballerinas is to kind of see um, through his eyes these different poses because that's what he was really um, crazy about is the, um, the unusual postures and unusual poses. And that's why he frequently painted uh, ballerinas because um, there was so much difference um, in the shape of the body. So, um, what I'm going to do now is just get some paint and, uh, paint a ballerina and you can look back at your sketches. You can use the one that you are the most crazy about, um, or you can follow along with me. I don't know how, how perfect mine's going to be. Um, but the idea here when we do artist inspiration is not to create a finished piece that we necessarily want to hang up or want to sell. Um, but to take in inspiration from an artist that we like, um, or an artist that we've not studied before and, um, just kind of broaden our skills. So I'm just going to start sketching a ballerina. Um, I really like the poses uh, where you see the full tutu, so I think I'm just going to start sketching kind of a large tutu shape here. So if you want to, if you want to follow along with me step by step, um, you can do that, or you can follow along. You can start sketching out one of your sketches. All right, so I'd like her to have leg down here. Her other one is probably up here somewhere. Um, the general shape of the upper half of the body is kind of tr a triangle shape. Sketch this. This would be where her waist is. I want some arms going this way. So I'm not I'm not a figure painter or by any means. I don't paint a lot of bodies. Um, but when you're doing arms, so I kind of sketched in my torso here. Um, the arm has three parts: the upper arm, the lower arm, and then the hand. So upper arm lower arm, hand. I'm going to create kind of that dip um, where the ballerina's chest is showing and then kind of pull that arm upward there. Again, I'm just sketching. I'll have to redo all this with paint. Um, course got the, the hair and we'll give her a little ballerina bow. The guy usually gave them chokers. All right and then of course I'm gonna create some lines out from this tutu just to help me with the the pleats and the layers of that tool, which um, tool is one of those materials I cannot stand touching. I absolutely hate it. All right, so here's my general sketch of the ballerina. Um, one interesting thing about Degas is that um, he 
uh, really revered the old masters and the process of um, kind of studying uh, a subject and um, kind of going through that, that the old master process um, using all of the um, the things you learn in art school and that kind of thing. So um, he really did not like impressionist painters and the style that they used. Um, they often would paint in plein air outside. Um, they would often um, kind of intentionally uh, blur details. And um, part of the reason why Degas' work was um, on the impressionist spectrum is because his eyesight was failing and he he couldn't do the details so it wasn't necessarily that he preferred working that way as much as um that's kind of the card he was dealt so anyway i am gonna make i'm gonna start with some purple i am a purple person uh through and through so i'm gonna get some dioxazine purple and um, my paint's gray, and a little bit of white, and I'm just going to start with my background. And I'm just going to add these colors in, blend them on the page, kind of just get some color on here. To keep my background fairly dark because I want the focus to be on my ballerina. So I'm using that Payne's Gray to keep it dark and to mute some of that purple. I don't want the purple to be real bright. Um, another artist trick um, is to add the complement. Um, so across the color wheel from purple is going to be yellow and you can use yellow to uh, subdue that color a little bit, that purple. Um, so if you're creating purple with me, you can kind of dull it a smidge. It'll, it's going to muddy it up a little bit, but that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about muddying up that color. Sorry if I bumped my camera. I'm using these long handled uh, brushes here. Um, I'm not worried about perfection around my sketch, but I do want to keep the general shape.
Um, because I'm copying an impressionist painter, I certainly want brush strokes to be present and counted for on this background. Wherever I have over blended, I'm going to go back in and just add some more of those brush strokes in. So I'm fairly happy with that as my background. Since I'm working with acrylic, oops, I did miss a spot. I'm gonna go back there and that in. Since I am working with acrylic here, um, you know, I'm starting backwards and pulling forwards. So um, the next layer is going to be um, her skin tone, I believe, because we've got the leg in the back and then I'm going to layer on top of her face and all that. So actually, I keep finding these places that I just this is driving me crazy. All oh, that white. Okay. I need to take my own advice that I am just doing this as a study and not to overfixate. All right. Skin tones can be tricky. And so um, typically, what I like to do for a skin tone um, is I will start with um, an off-white, like a unbleached titanium or something similar to that. Let me see if I can even find it. I do not know. Definitely had one. I guess I don't. Okay. Bronze, iridescent. Oh, there it is. Okay. Titan buff. We'll, we'll work with a Titan buff. Um, so that already is kind of a creamy color. And then um, what I'll do is just add a tinge of brown. Um, so depending on the skin tone that you want, um, raw sienna. It might be a good option, or burnt umber might be a good option. Um, but we are going to start with that off white. And I'm sorry, my palette's kind of messy. So I've got off white here, and I'm just, just going to add an inch of burnt umber. Let's see what happens there.
And this is leaning um, towards the gray side. So I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, burnt sienna, which has a yellow undertone. And I'm going to mix that in. And of course you can go as light or as dark as you want, but with those three colors, you should be able to uh, mix a decent skin tone. And then you would just keep adding the raw umber, or burnt umber and raw sienna until you get to a color that you like for your skin. And again, you can go as dark or as light as you choose for your ballerina. I want to make sure that I have two two tones. I want a lighter tone and a darker tone. So I pulled some off to the side and I'm adding white. Um, you could also just pull some off to the side and add a little darker, but two tones. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the first tone here. This is where I can really kind of refine my figure shape. And I'm gonna keep my body shape fairly sketchy. I'm not, I'm not going to um, try to be perfect with this. I kind of made a boo-boo there, but I can go back and fix that with purple when I'm done. So the thing about arms um, is that they should be wider on top, the middle section a little thinner, and then the bottom, you know, where the hand is, should be the thinnest area. Um, I kind of botched up that arm a little bit. That's okay. I'll fix that later. not going to forget about my little leg here. All right. So now I've got this first layer of color on there. I'm going to dip into this darker color and we're going to start adding some shadow. So up here on the face, you know, underneath on the right side, her hair is going to cast a little shadow. Um, we've got a little shadow here on the, the neck. Um, we would have Let's see, we're shadowing up at the top of the and I am just kind of blending in some color. Um, because this is part of the impressionist process is to just have that a variety of brush strokes in there. And then on her leg, she's gonna have a shadow right here under that tutu. Um, her knee is kind of right here. And then this side will leave shadow there.
right. I think for her tutu, I'm going to stick with purpley blue. Uh, so let's see. I've got this color. It's light blue violet. I'm going to pull out. Um, let's see. Phthalo blue. Dioxazine purple. And then white is what I'm going to use for this tutu. And I'm going to go right in with a flat brush um, and I'm going to layer um, darker to lighter. Um, so I'm going to start with purple, dioxazine purple mixed with my Prussian blue, uh, similar to the background, but I'm going to add a pinch of this lighter. What was that light? Violet? Yeah, light blue violet. Um, just to change up that color. Okay, so right here around her waist, that's going to be the darkest. So I'm going to put that in there. And I might even add a little water and kind of thin this down. Um, I'm just going to do my first layer of coverage on this tutu. All right, so I'm just going to follow the shape of the circle with my flat brush. Moving outward from her waist because I don't, I don't want to lose that shape. I'm just going to pull outward and kind of make these tool-like tutu strokes. taking inspiration for Degas. He was an impressionist. We are not going for realism. We want to see brush strokes. We want to see all that fun detail, that fun imperfection. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be adding a little bit of that light blue. And then I'm going to start going over this. Kind of do and all the way around here. We're just little by little covering up some of that white that shows. I'm just going to be adding layers to the tutu just like there are layers of that tool. And I'm gonna fix these arms, so I'm not stressing about that. And I am just gonna lighten with every pass.
And I'm just adding a little bit of darkness around these edges to try to get rid of that white halo there. But again, trying to keep in mind that I'm creating this for fun, not for display, so I don't need to overthink it. For my final later layer, I'm just kind of dry brushing some white over the top here. And that's my tutu. That's pretty much it for the tutu. Uh, now I just want to finish this uh, upper part, um, the corset part of the dress. So I'm going to switch to a round for that and um, I'm pretty much just going to, I don't know, I'm going to add some blue to this leftover purpley mix that I have. And I'm going to add the next layer of this corset here. little highlight here where the corset comes forward.
I'm gonna add a little shadow back here. It comes up by your neck, maybe a little, little shadow underneath. Again, kind of dulling out that color with my uh, Prussian blue here, or uh, Payne's gray. So adding some shadow with a Payne's gray, there we go. Touch up this background a little bit where I I bo boofed up on the uh, arm. You didn't boof up on the arm. You do not need to do this stuff. For me, I boofed. Okay, I am super sorry about that. Um, my broadcast ended. I think I had a little blip with the internet today. So um, I'm just going to finish this up and I'll, I'll add it to the recording and update all that and, you know, all that good stuff. So I'm just fixing this little blip I made here with the skin color and, I don't know, kind of fixing the background and playing with it. Again, um, trying to remind myself that this is just for fun and for play. Uh, and so now I'm just going to kind of finish up these details. Uh, I've got to finish the arms and add a little of the face detail. I've already got these skin tones mixed up, so this should not be too much of an issue. All right, for the face, um, I'm just going to use my darker skin tone, and I'm just going to add um, the impression of eyes and facial features, but I'm not actually going to focus on the shapes of those. So just going to kind of touch them in and then Blend them out a little bit. a little bun on top of her head. Let's That's pretty much it. That is my Degas ballerina. Um, totally just made her on a whim from those sketches. Um, sorry about the live cutting out. Um, I will get this recording up ASAP. And I cannot wait what you create. So I hope that you'll share with me um, in whatever way that you took inspiration from Degas. And 
I will show you where you can share. So I have a group called uh, the Painted Cicadas Art and Share on Facebook. I would love if you would join that group and share your work with me um, there. And it's free to join. You can share things that you create with me, but you can also share things that you create on your own. So um, I would love to see your ballerinas or, um, you know, whatever direction you decided to go. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I will have an artist inspiration every month. Um, coming up in the next few months, we are going to do um, Eric Carl, and we are going to do, um, oh, what is his name? Shoot, I'm having a brain freeze. Um, well, we've got another fun uh, uh, contemporary artist. Um, that spray paints his art designs. Let me think of his name. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is my problem? I have so much of his stuff and I cannot think of his name. Well, I'm going to get back to you on that. Um, but he's super cool. Uh, so anyway, keep an eye out for what I've got coming up.